Hello and welcome back to Genesis Designs and Modelcraft and welcome back to modelling for beginners with the Airfix Mosquito PR16. And as you can no doubt realise the model is exactly the same as it was when I left you last time. And that is because of Word NB 1830 who commented on the last video about something called high Q circle masks. Now I noted in, in said video that some of my punched discs, certainly the bigger ones, were a little less than crisp. They're not terrible, but they're not perfect. And it may be that it's a shortcoming of my particular punch and die set, and I don't remember what brand it is, but I have had it for a long time, so perhaps it's slightly worn, or perhaps it was never actually uh, precise enough to really successfully sharply cut tape even though it's applied to a piece of plastic card. Um, but anyway, the net result is that these masks down here, which I cut with some of the largest punches from my set, weren't very sharp. Now, Word NB 1830 said about these high Q masks, and uh, as, it would ha as it happens, whilst I was working on the model, I mused inside my head um, that it would be great if there was such a thing as a set of pre-cut circle masks in all different sizes and would you believe there actually is <laughs> um, they said the aforementioned high Q parts circle masks these are made in Japan and they are indeed high quality it's a very thin uh, sort of kabuki tape on a clear backing film um, and as you can see there this is a factory of grade up parts and tool for plastic model Lovely bit of a Japan glitch there. Anyway, um, I got these from Premium Hobbies. I just did a Google uh, high Q masks and Premium Hobbies came up. So I bought some and I bought all three of the available sets, small, medium and large, at a princely sum of £3.95 per sheet. Now, this is what you get in them. As you can see, we start at one millimeter and go up in 0.2 mil increments all the way up to 2.8 on this sheet. Uh, the medium sheet, which I have here, takes over then and goes from three mil to 4.6, again in 0.2 millimeter increments. And here's the sheet in the wild. Um, it's very, very thin Kabuki style tape. You can see I've already taken three of the three mil ones to mask these cameras, these are slightly smaller, uh, on this clear backing. Um, and another point with this is, these are pre-cut circles, but if I bring it up more closely, you can see that each circle resides within a square. So if the situation were reversed, and you in fact wanted to paint a small circle on the model, you could simply apply the square and leave the circle behind. This means that you have both inside and outside masks for circles at 0.2 millimeter increments all the way from one millimeter up to six with the uh, large set. Uh, I think that's brilliant as you can see I, I already bought them all. Um, the header is stapled to the pack and I just uh, I'm sticking it back inside so I know which is which at a glance after using him. A, a really brilliant tip, thank you very much to Mr Word um, and hopefully that might be of use to some some of the rest of you too because you don't just you, you don't you don't just use circle masks to actually mask circles you can also use them in the corners of canopies and things like that as part of a larger masking job uh, they're qu really quite useful things to have and as a couple of people have commented they feel that beginners might struggle to neatly cut circles like I have here now while we're talking about the aspect of beginnerism uh, again I've had a couple of comments saying things along the lines if they're not really convinced that this is a build for beginners um, I can kind of see where, th where these people are coming from but from my point of view it is difficult to really I think accurately understand exactly where to pitch things I've I've been modeling for more than 40 years 
uh, and I've reached a reasonable standard and I do it a lot and I also am lucky enough to be possessed of pretty decent hand skills and a fairly good eye so some of the things that I find very very easy are potentially not that easy for other people and as well when you're very experienced at something it's difficult to see things from the perspective of someone who isn't now I always knew that with this build and it's always difficult for me to as I say to know exactly where to pitch things but even if people don't see this as being really truly beginnering I'll just counter that with things like masking with bare metal foil apparently some people think that's a bit advanced but I just think what's the point of learning to do something in an inferior manner which some people might think is easier um, and then moving on to doing it in this more difficult way I don't really see the point of that you might as well learn from my experience really um, and go straight straight to um, <laughs> straight to go and collect your 200 pounds um, and you know if you're not confident with bare metal foil and masking a canopy you can just practice get some bare metal foil and practice with it and you don't even need to practice on a canopy you can practice on any plastic part simply by burnishing finding panel lines and tracing them out um, yeah it's all about practicing and finding things that are comfortable for you and in fairness to me I did show other options for masking as well anyway uh, so yeah I, I appreciate and some on some on some levels this may not seem like a true first time modeler beginner build but from my point of view I'm just talking about everything in a lot more detail than I perhaps would normally and explaining simpler con uh, concepts more completely than I would normally so you know the overwhelming feedback I'm getting is good so I'm, I'm just going to carry on anyway with that caveat done I have now remasked these so I'm happy to go the uh, undercarriage massile just happily sitting on there in place have a quick check of your nacelle masking Tamiya tape has a habit if it's left on for a little bit of time and this has been on here a fortnight or so of just lifting a little uh, it's no biggie just push, just press it back down again and at this point do consider tickling where you've sprayed these base colours just to feather in the edge uh, I don't need to this is fine it's quite smooth and I'm testing that by touching it as you can see uh, if you feel any roughness then then get your um, fine sanding media out and just give it a little tickle I use Trizact for this Trizact is here we go it's a 3M product for the automotive refinishing trade it's uh this is the P3000 you can see a 3 there uh, and the 1000 here it comes in a full circle meant for attaching to a 6 inch dual orbital dual action sander as you can see uh, mine is slowly getting whittled away because I just cut chunks off at a time um, always either remove this sort of plastic layer that's got the velcro on it either peel it off which it will sometimes peel off or use scissors as I have here to cut at an angle like so so that when you're sanding onto a model the plastic doesn't catch it because that will hurt paint quite badly so do remember to do that but you can just use something like this Trizact to just tickle in where your oversprays are like this and it will just completely remove any hint of roughness before you start putting that main colour on like so I suppose at this point I should take a moment to talk about primer I don't want to go on about it for ages because I'm simply not going to do it but primer it's one of those processes which has become almost de rigueur in modelling it really doesn't need to be model paints are designed to stick to plastic and the most part they do so there's no need to use primer for that reason um, which then only leaves uh, irregular surfaces and surface damage I don't have any irregular surfaces or surface damage here I don't have any photo etch or resin or anything else 
uh, that's going to cause any adhesion problems, colour differences or anything like that. So I don't feel that there's any need at all to prime this model, so I'm not going to. I'm going to go straight in with paint. And that paint is going to be the SMS Premium. I bought this a while back specifically to try on this model because they do PRU Blue as a premix, um, which not many companies do. And as you can see, it does need a modicum of stirring. There is a ball in here. You might just be able to hear that tinkling about. So you can shake it up, but be warned, you need to shake it for quite some time. So bear with me and I'll get this mixed. All right, some time later, as I say, it, it does take a minute, but that is now completely and thoroughly mixed. Um, but before I put it in the brush and actually slap a coat on here, um, let's just take a moment to look at our colour scheme. So uh, this isn't a my way or the highway kind of channel. Um, so I will take a moment to, to share this now. Some modelers indeed maybe many modelers might consider it best to paint the stripes and the red tail before they paint the blue the reason for that is that you need white you need white under the red preferably uh, and obviously you need white for the white stripes so why not you know paint the whole back end of the model white and the underneath of the wings there and then at least mask off the white areas before putting the blue on. And why not indeed? It's a perfectly valid approach. I don't do that because, and you're going to think I'm an idiot, but the invasion stripes and the red tail are painted over the blue on the real thing. So my preference is to replicate that on my model. You know, it makes very little difference to anything. I don't have a problem with painting it afterwards, so I'm going to paint the blue first. But I just thought I would um, mention that because some may may prefer to go the other way around. And just bear that in mind as I go through the masking and the different colours, that that is certainly an option. Right. It's also important at this point to gather together the parts that you need to spray. So here's my other windscreen I need my tip tanks and my undercarriage doors so obviously they all need mounting also so let's go with where's my extra thin blue tack receptacle here he is let's go with a spatula for the doors piece of blue tack and podge the doors onto it. Make sure that the blue tack is tapered away from the edges because otherwise you might mask a little bit of the front edge of the door and end up having to do the painting twice and nobody likes that. I have already got paint on my fingers obviously. Obviously we'll have to paint the inside of these doors green later on. If I was really on the ball I'd have probably already done it. Hey, voila. That's those mounted nicely. So the tip tanks, what am I going to do with those? Now I could blue tack them onto a spatula as well. Um, in the spirit of showing lots of different ways to do things, I think what I'll do instead is grab a drill and just drill a girt hole in the top here where it won't be seen at any point once it's fitted. Like so. And then just grab a cocktail stick and stick it in said hole. If you push that in, just with pressure but gently so as not to split the part, because I've naturally drilled the middle where the seam is. And there you have 
a holder. So that's all the parts that need the blue mounted, prepped and ready to go. So let's get some paint in the brush. So the SMS is an, uh, a lack of paint and some may recall that when I sprayed these small areas that we've masked that I felt that it, it was a little bit thick as it comes it is marketed as being pre thin for airbrushing and many people will be perfectly happy with the consistency of this as it comes I felt it was a touch heavy so I have thinned this slightly with Mr Colour Thinner uh, which has worked absolutely fine and now I'm going to paint the model I'm going to paint the whole thing uh, I'm not going to show the whole painting process because it's noisy and it's not particularly exciting to watch. Uh, but here goes anyway, I'm going to have to put my extractor on. And let's get to it. Okay, here we are a few minutes later and that amount that I put in my brush turned out to be pretty much exactly the right amount, which is always nice. Um, and there it is all painted. I forgot to mention the aerial post. And I've now got quite a lot of paint on my fingers. Um, the tanks are in my multi-purpose extra thin jar. So here it is, all done and doesn't it look lovely? The, the shape of the mosquito is just shouting now isn't it as you can see it's a nice sort of semi gloss finish um, that's it's two light coats as you saw initially on that first wing panel over the whole thing where it's a bit shinier is where I put it on a little bit more wetly um, it does sprout beautifully that the addition of that thinner was was the right call I think it isn't as fast to dry as the likes of uh, Mr Paint, Mr Colour. It's still very slightly tacky feeling when I hold it and since I'm not in any sort of a rush I'm going to take that hint and I will leave it overnight before I go any further. Well welcome to the next day and this is now fully fully dry. So as I said it doesn't seem to dry quite as quickly as other lacquer paints that I've used, Mr. Paint, Mr. Colour and the like. Uh, it's certainly dry enough to touch and handle very very quickly but it just got that sort of slight soft feeling to it uh, which dissuaded me from cracking straight on with the masking which you know with Mr. Paint and such you pretty much can do as soon as you finish painting one colour you can pretty much mask it and get on with the next. But as I said no rush so I've left it overnight and it is now fully dry you can see I have note the blue in there this is my piece of tries act last night when it was uh, like, you know a couple of hours after I painted it I looked at it and I felt it with my finger like I am now and it was a bit rough in places so I just nipped around it just very very lightly might be able to see the sanding marks there absolutely fine nothing to worry about they will completely disappear under any kind of clear coat so i just been round and just nibbed it basically so that it's nice and smooth everywhere i also forgot to mask the tower wheel bay so i have repainted that <laughs> in interior green i'm not concerned by the overspray because we're just about to paint the thing red and I've masked it with some putty. Uh, I have used this. I got this off Amazon, if I remember correctly. It was about six pounds for this tub, so-called therapy putty. 
and it is it, it's basically exactly the same as this stuff other brands are available I think AK and Vallejo probably all do these as well and this is that strange silly putty stuff I'm English so silly putty isn't something I'm familiar with we have play-doh and play-doh doesn't behave like this but anyway I got this um, a short while back it's exactly the same stuff it's probably maybe a bit less in here than there is in here but you can get it directly off Amazon I'll link it below you can get it in different colors and different weights or sort of squidginesses I think the idea of it is that you're supposed to uh, uh, there we go you kind of use it to make fists essentially I think and it if you try to squeeze it quickly it resists and if you squeeze it slowly it kind of squidges in a very satisfying manner <laughs> in one's fist um, and yeah stretchy if you go slow and snaps if you go fast it's very strange stuff uh, but yeah this is essentially the same as a panzer putty and it's just a bit easier to get hold of and a little bit cheaper and there's loads there that will last ages and over the next hour or two once I pull that back in there it will just naturally flatten itself back up into that perfect tub so yeah this is from Amazon anywho that's masked up so now we have to consult uh, the painting and marking diagram to decide where and how we'll go about masking off for this red tail and indeed the invasion stripes now Airfix's decal artist has been kind enough to note the size of these invasion stripes which I'm sure is based on the publicised or the, or the sort of the guides that they were supposed to use when they put these things on I think were they 18 inches wide or something like that um, that translates on the model to 8.4 millimetres which we don't have a tape that's 8.4 millimetres wide we have 6 or 10 but actually this works to our advantage as we'll see when we get on with it um, so the first thing we need to do is tape out these areas in order to paint them white uh, and that's what I'm going to get, get on with next using good old Tamiya tape and one of the best things about Tamiya tape is the snails it's not just because it's so easy to get the tape and just snip it off without use recourse to a separate tool the main reason these are brilliant is because they keep the tape clean if you were to take Tamiya tape's got a very good edge on it. It's a good enough edge that you can use it for masking. You don't need to trim it back. But if you ever use these, the the Tamiya tape for curves, I bought it, but I'm not convinced for the most part. You must keep it when you're not using it in the bags. Because if you don't, all manner of dirt and crud will... See how that's stuck a little bit to the inside of the bag and any tape will do this. We'll stick to this edge. Okay, and what what happens with that is then when you use the tape to mask your model, you can't see or notice this dirt particularly for the most part, but what what you end up with is a taped line that is not perfectly crisp. By keeping the tape in these snails, as you default to doing because time you supply it this way. It means that this this edge is always clean enough to give a good line. So with that in mind, I shall get on and start getting this thing masked up. Okay, so I've started with the underwing invasion stripes. Um, the diagram appears to show uh, that they perform a nice straight line from the leading edge adjacent to the nacelle back to the back edge of the wing which means that the line comes away from the nacelle towards the back edge of the wing because the nacelle is in fact not straight as you would imagine this is going to be intensely tricky to mask successfully so I haven't even tried I've arbitrarily decided I'm literally going to use the edge of the nacelle as my inboard line so it is not straight I'm not remotely concerned by that because 
In practice, the invasion stripes were added by the ground crews at pretty short notice using brushes, rollers, bits and pieces, whatever they had to hand. I very much doubt that they were too concerned about masking a perfectly straight line along the edge coming away from the cell. I very much doubt that they did. It really doesn't matter. And I'm going to take the easy route on this occasion. Then to set the width, uh, the diagram says we want a 42mm block. So I've set my divider to 42mm using the steel rule. There you go. Again, I'm not worried about it being absolutely specific and precise. And I'm going to use the divider to set that width here. So I'll touch it to the edge of the nacelle. And then I'll touch it to the model on the end of the wing. And I'm making it look hard work because I'm trying to angle it for the camera and myself here. It's not easy. Basically wedge that in there and just make a mark. It's not going to be much of a mark, obviously, because this isn't a pencil. But hopefully you might be able to see just in between those two circles. There's a little shiny line that I've just put on with my divider. And I'm just going to put the one on because obviously... I don't, <laughs> I don't want to follow that taper out at this end. Then I'm going to get my strip of tape here and I'm going to cut a, a, a slender strip steel rule scalpel just like that. Now I'm angling the model in the light so that I can see that little tiny mark I just put on there. And I'm going to pop the tape down somewhere near it. And then I'm simply going to literally just eyeball it straight. Something like that. There's a few ways you can check whether it's straight if you're too really very, very bothered. You can use the dividers to check sort of to this strengthening strip, say. Let's do that. I've got that pretty close so I've set it to this piece of detail you can see if I hold that there it's just on the edge of the tape if I hold it at the leading edge it's basically just on the edge of the tape um, eyes are very very good at seeing things straight so I'm happy enough with that as I said the um, the ground crew didn't have the benefit of holding the aircraft up to look at it from different angles. They're working overhead there uh, to do this. So, you know, don't worry too much about it being absolutely perfect. Unless, of course, you really want it to be, and that is your prerogative as a modeler. You can do it however you like. Uh, and the excess uh, tape, I'm just going to stick it over the top don't actually need it but that's going to go over like that then I'm going to use thicker tape I've got some 18 mil here and I always stick it to my arm I do have the benefit of not having very hairy arms if you have very hairy arms probably don't stick it to your arm use the palm of your hand or something because for one thing it hurts when you pull it off and it pulls off hairs with it and for another you'll end up with hairs on the tape which will render it useless for what we want and basically just block out around this area to account for overspray I'm going to be putting white on here it's a relatively large area of white so really by the time I've finished masking all these areas the whole rest of the model is going to be covered with tape or with some form of protection from overspray all right, fast forward quite some time and I've got the main areas blocked out. So these two panels on the wings, 
this panel here and the entire tail assembly are all lined out. Now because I'm spraying the whole tail assembly and this area and these areas with white I really do need to cover the whole rest of the model up pretty much uh, just to protect it from overspray but rather than cover the whole thing in tape I mean it would probably use a whole roll which is quite expensive I've, I've got this other stuff here and this is something I bought quite a long time ago because I thought oh that'll be handy uh, and, and then I've literally virtually never used it and it's so handy that it's just taken me ages to find it but this, it's ideal for this and this is a uh, Tamiya actually uh, it's basically a fold out plastic sheet which already has tape attached to one edge kind of like the plastic masking wrap you get for cars so I'm going to peel a bit of this off um, and I'm going to sort of wrap it around most of the model rather than covering everything in tape I have seen these available still for various places like through Model Centre that sell bizarre tools have this kind of stuff but if you don't have this then clearly any sort of uh, you know clearish plastic that you can see what you're doing or even foil actually tin foil is quite useful for uh, masking stuff like this anyhow we'll get this done and there it is all masked up and there is still quite a bit of tape obviously um, it's just quicker and easier sometimes to use tape um, but this sort of complicated area in the middle is all covered up with the plastic. A um, couple of other points to note, I have used the masking fluid um, here as you can see it's still wet at the moment. The reason for that is because of the curvature of the fuselage the tape is compressed on this edge basically to get it to go straight visually um, so there is a tendency for tiny little gaps so I've just whizzed over it with the mask hole and likewise in the two corners where the nacelles meet the wing because of the shape and everything else the tape has a tendency to lift out of, of the corner so you have to slit it to get the tape to sit down there and, and all I've done really is just I popped a bit of mask hole uh, well masking fluid it isn't mask hole just to stop any errant paint going in there um, I do see a lot of comment uh, that overspray is inevitable uh, with masking I'd really like you all to take on board that it absolutely isn't it absolutely is not inevitable to get overspray and if you're going into a job with the attitude that you're not going to get it right then in my opinion there's a fair chance you won't um, it just needs to be approached in a methodical way you need to be thorough and check your work and ensure all bases are covered yes occasionally there will be you know mistakes get made obviously but it is it really isn't inevitable and you really shouldn't expect to have issues with overspray when you're masking um, all of the larger areas where I have simply used tape because it's just so much quicker I've used this stuff 25 mil this is kip kip tape uh, I got this ages and ages ago and it's essentially as you can see it's very similar to Tamiya tape it isn't the same it's a bit thicker um, but it's really very good for doing that kind of thing because it's just bigger and all of these sort of bigger strips where I've placed them on top of the finish I have stuck to my arm and peeled off and I don't think I mentioned before that the reason I do that is to slightly detack the tape to use up some of its stickiness so that it's less likely that it will pull off the paint when you remove it uh, and so there I am thinking yep we're done we can start putting paint on and I noticed that I've made a boo-boo a fairly big one uh, actually so some time ago I did a little sprue tour uh, copyright Jamie Hacko <laughs> and I, I went through the bits in the box and essentially snipped off everything from the sprues that I needed to complete the build here are said parts but what I didn't snip off the sprues at that point was 
the fin mounted pito which which has a really really big mounting aperture on the fin leading edge and i've just realized it and i've searched through the stuff and it's not there and obviously i got rid of the rest of the sprues and everything ages ago so it's gone so i'm going to have to fix that myself so what i have done is i've got a piece of plastic card this thick i don't know how thick that is but it looks to be about a millimeter or a bit more than a millimeter thick uh, and i've literally super glued that chunk into that forward edge of the fin i'm going to go away and leave it to fully harden uh, and then once it is i will quickly clip off most of the excess with the nippers uh, and then i'll use the sharp scalpel blade to really gently shave and trim it till it's fair with the fin and maybe just tickle it a little bit uh, with a sanding stick and once all that is done I can just simply drill into the front of it she says just simply I know a lot of people have a lot of trouble with drilling but I will just drill into the front of it and make a little pito up out of um, some Albion, Albion alloy interlocking tubing um, just to fix that's my own faux pas I hope that none of the rest of you have done that so you won't have to worry <laughs> you can fit the pito later um, it's really not an issue at this stage because this blue paint is it's not even necessary so a little bit of damage will be done but it doesn't matter but I'll cover that when the glue is dry There you go then I fixed my little error there just a little bit of a tickle with the sanding stick to finish that off and then a little go over with the sponges to take any scratches out and you can see how relatively little damage that's actually done to the paintwork but I'm hoping that that is all completely irrelevant and that none of you following along have been stupid enough to throw the rest of your kit away before you are finished with it <clears throat> yeah moving on okay so i'm ready to go i've got white in my airbrush i am using good old spin 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 xf2 uh, this is franken paint like a lot of my sort of ready use regular paints the blacks and whites and what have you um they get topped up and they get other bits and pieces in them so this does actually have some lacquer tell me a lacquer paint white in it and i'll, I'll you know anyway it's white and we're ready to paint i've got it in the brush so i'll give you a quick couple of minutes and then finish off camera oh top tip painting white because we need coverage um there is a tendency uh it will happen that you will get an edge of build up along the tape don't worry about that the real thing would have had an edge as well um but to minimize that edge you can just spray away from the edges so you've got to spray up to the edge of your tape but if you angle the brush away from the tape edge the build up will, will be slightly less severe and slightly less harsh such as this like so always just try and maneuver the brush around so that you're spraying away from, not in so you're not spraying like this into that taped edge you're spraying in the this direction away from it and it will just make that transition from blue to white slightly less harsh less harsh less harsh And here we are with the white on now as you can see by the sheen on this that uh, paint is not pure 
uh, XF2 because XF2 is very flat. I think I chucked some lacquer paint white in there that must have been gloss. It might even have X2 mixed into it, but it's a quite pleasant satin and it's smooth finish. Now, I do not have full coverage here. Yes, this appears to be white, but if you were to put it against a, an actually white object, you can see that um, that's quite a long way from being fully pure white, but it's white enough for what we need. Back on the tail here, it's just providing a ground coat for the red colour. And underneath, once the black stripes are added and it's demasked, the effect against the blue of the rest of the model will be nothing but white. It will look exactly plenty white enough, trust me. So red paint, paint the fin red. It says here to use Humbrol 60 matte scarlet. I guess it's some kind of insignia red probably. I'm just going to use what I've got to hand. Uh, on this occasion I'm going to use this. This is Tammy Alaka paint LP79. I'm just going to mix some of that up and pop it in the airbrush. Uh, here we go, red in the brush. Thus, uh, I'm, hopefully you've noticed that I have just loosely covered the white band here to avoid getting red back onto that. I didn't bother with these, I think these are far enough away. Fingers crossed. That's the red on and it looks absolutely nuclear on my tiny screen. Very, very bright. That was um, essentially three half decent coats throughout and you can see potentially the sort of red, little bits of red overspray all the way up here. It just goes to show, um, I mean obviously I wasn't being careful because the rest of the model is completely masked but it just goes to show how far some of the overspray can get. However, it isn't necessarily a problem. This is pretty dry by the time it gets all the way up here and wouldn't really be overly stuck. So, so I've taken that back off there and the last thing to do then in this initial sort of painting sequence is to mask up for the black identification stripes. So two black stripes in each one of these white areas. Um, the the way I'm going to go about that, uh, cognizant this is going to get quite long, but I guess I should probably, I should probably show you. So, let's get that out of the way. Keep these bits here. So, we need six mil tape. So, the stripes are supposed to be eight and a half millimetres wide. So the first thing I'm going to do, 8.4 millimetres, gosh really, we need to be that precise. The first thing I'm going to do, set the dividers up to 8.5ish. This ruler does have half mil increments on it, so we can do that. So that's roughly there. Okay. Next I'm going to take the 6 mil tape make a strip long enough to do a stripe and I'm literally without measuring anything or being precise going to cut it down the middle ish using steel rule and scalpel just like that now using the divider the same way as I did for this overall width here I'm going to go to the edge of my tape and I'm going to really carefully just lightly brush the surface and that leaves just enough of a mark that I can see it but there's not enough of a mark there I can kind of see the reflection of it it certainly wouldn't show uh, any other time where are my tweezers here they are now I'll get the tape that you've just cut and use it cut side out because the cut side you've the edge that you've just cut is sharper, sharpest. Identify the mark just made.
place the tape adjacent to that one and then do the same to that one that gives us the bottom stretch just press that down very gently and then a bit of manipulation will be required because of the width of the tape get that straight see that is not straight straight to this here Better, and then you can confirm that with the dividers 8.45 ish that does leave a slight sort of crease that the tape can't do so just knit that together with the tweezers and then do the same this side obviously this is slightly over complicated even more by the presence of the Reinforcing bar, get it roughly where you need it, press it into that undercut first and then bring the rest of the tape round and again pinch together the little creases and that's the first white area done so just to save any potential confusion I know I am prone to it we want the white stripes outermost, so just fill in and that area straight away so we don't accidentally paint the wrong bit. And there you go, so that's the first one. And for all the subsequent bars, I'm literally going to do the same thing again, except that I'm going to work back from this way as well, so that any error gets taken up in the middle rather than having 8.4, 8.4, 8 8.4, 10. <laughs> because visually, that, that's a lot less jarring. There we go, stripes all masked out. Obviously doing the ones on the wings is massively easier than doing the ones on the fuselage, a lot less guesswork involved. Uh, I have some black in the airbrush. I'm using XF85 rubber black from Tamiya. There we go. This one is another Franken paint. Um, it's already pre thinned and good to go. So, oh, there was, I have had a disaster. This is going to be a pain, but I think you see the dark patch there. The, um, The SMS PRU Blue adhesion of it isn't, it turns out, the best. Um, and where I just pressed ever so gently on the paint with my divider, uh, the paint has subsequently departed with the tape when I've been moving the tape around. So I'm going to have to do some touching up. Okay, there it is then. All the main basic colours are fitted. Uh, and that red towel still looks near clear, doesn't it? So, uh, as <laughs> as predicted, smug mode on. There are no, no issues with overspray anywhere. Um, but there are a few issues with... Um, there are the stripes and all their glory. There are a few issues with the um, PRU blank. PRU blue paint pulling away in a couple of areas which I'm going to have to fix. I have pulled off the circle mask off this ident light here whilst I was demasking this but that's not an issue at all. I can remask that again later when it comes to flat coat. So the next stage for the model, uh, it may seem counterintuitive, but I'm going to very carefully go around it and clean it. There are a couple of little bits of sticky residue here and there, which is odd. Tamiya tape doesn't normally do that. Um, I'm going to very carefully go around it and make sure there's nothing like that on it. Um, with the edges, the masked edges, it's useful just to give them a little polish with your fingertip. That sounds ridiculous, but the fingers are actually excellent for doing this. There will be a tiny little edge sort of crust like build up of paint and just hitting it with your finger like that is just enough to knock that off but the edges really aren't severe anyway it's, it's come out very very nice um, and, and the sort of the shape and the feel of this thing 
are really starting to pop now I'm, I'm really yeah it's looking good so yeah anyway I digressed as usual um, I'm going to go around it very carefully just make sure it's all clean and, and, and clean and tidy and then I'm going to give it a single coat sort of coat and a half of highly thinned X22 clear now this is thinned with Mr Colour thinner and just for clarity I'll bring that into shot as well this stuff and when I say highly thinned, what I put in this jar, this is thinned 50-50 already because I dump a 10ml in here and then I fill the 10ml jar with Mr Colour Thinner, give it a good shake and put that in there and that cleans out the jar as well. So this is already 50-50 and then I mix it probably 50-50 again. So you're talking about 70-80% 70 to 80% thinners and I'll just give it one quick coat not a heavy coat a slick coat just a nice quick flash coat a very highly thindex 22 and what that will do is seal all of these edges and it will help the paint that's already on here to stay on here um, I know it sounds ridiculous but it will uh, because the thinners will penetrate the whole lot so that's I'm going to do that uh, and then when that's fully dry I'll come back and do all the little touch-ups but we'll talk about that in the next um, in the next episode so this is probably a bit of a long one I apologize for that but I did want to cover all the painting in one go uh, and there is plenty for you all to be getting on with <laughs> before the next episode pops up so um, thank you so much for watching I hope it's been helpful to you in some way um, thanks as always to all the support you all give in all the ways that you give it and to the guys that are building along I hope your uh, models are going well and feel free to keep me updated on those and with all that said until next time it only remains for me to say look after yourselves look after each other and Genesis out